Welcome to this video on sperm retrieval. The goal here is to talk about managing specifically non-obstructive azoospermia. I'm Dr. Ryan Flanagan. I'm a urologist and a microsurgeon trained in male reproduction. So first we'll define non-obstructive azoospermia. This is a scenario when testicles are not properly producing sperm. Therefore, no sperm are identified in the semen when we do semen tests. So if we've determined that sperm production is a problem, that results in the no sperm that we can find in the semen analysis tests. We've termed this non-obstructive azoospermia. We then have to figure out if this is a problem with the signal going to the testicles, which is a problem with either the pituitary or the hypothalamus, which are two structures in the brain, or if this is a testicle function problem. We basically determine this based on physical examination and the hormone profile. So really looking at the hormones tells us if this is a central problem or if this is a testicle failure problem. Now, if it's a central problem and there's dysfunction of the pituitary or the hypothalamus like we spoke about, then ultimately this scenario means that the, the pituitary or the hypothalamus is not sending the signal that we need down to the testicle for the testicle to know to make sperm. In the other scenario, however, when the testicle is failing, there is lots of signal coming from the pituitary and from the hypothalamus. There's plenty of signal, but the testicle isn't equipped to make the sperm for a reason we often don't understand. In fact, we only know the causes for about 15% of this scenario. Some of the common ones include Klinefelter syndrome, Y chromosome microdeletions, and other chromosomal problems, or even single gene mutations, but we don't typically perform clinical assays or tests to look for single gene mutations. So what can we do if we have non-obstructive azoospermia, a sperm production problem? Well, it really depends if this is a central problem or a testicular problem, and hence why it's so important for us to figure this out uh, based upon the hormone profile. So if it's a central problem, really what we need to do is reintroduce that signal that's coming from your, it's supposed to be coming from your brain down to the testicle. We have a few different medications that we can do to reestablish this signal. Sometimes we can use a GnRH pump, although these are pretty hard to come by and HCG uh, injections are a much more available technique and uh, this essentially involves giving yourself an injection with a small little needle three times per week. The HCG basically sends the signal to the testicle to some of the cells within the testicle to make testosterone. In this process, the testosterone then drives sperm production within the testicle. It's one of the most important factors in sperm production. The other important factor in regulating sperm production is something called FSH, which is the acronym that stands for follicle stimulating hormone. We can get something called recombinant FSH, which is a synthetically derived FSH molecule that we can introduce by injection again that also sends a signal to the testicle. A combination of these treatments or even HCG alone in some circumstances could be enough to reestablish sperm production in upwards of about 85% of men in this scenario. However, if we're looking at the other scenario where the lack of sperm production is because of a testicular problem, then we have a few different options. The mainstay of the treatment here is surgical sperm retrieval. Now we can perform uh, hormonal optimization to try to get your natural testosterone production up within the normal range if it's low, which can sometimes happen in this scenario. And there's some data to suggest that maybe this will help sperm production to a certain extent. But to be honest, the data is a little bit conflicting in the current literature. With respect to the surgical sperm retrieval, the best technique that is globally adopted is called the microdissection testicular sperm extraction, or microtessie for short. This was initially developed and reported by Dr. Peter Schlegel at Weill Cornell in New York, and has been one of my mentors. If we look at the surgical literature, the successful sperm retrieval rates are somewhat variable depending on the particular scenario, but most often range between 40 and 60%. Now, if we are able to get sperm retrieved from these scenarios, we're able to use it for IVF ICSI, meaning that we can take a single sperm with a single egg, inject the sperm into the egg, and try to result in a fertilization. 
If it results in a fertilization, then we can watch this turn into an embryo in the lab for three to seven days and transfer it back into the uterus of your partner uh, to try to have a clinical pregnancy and a live birth. Now, if we look at all of the literature and all of the steps between this point of diagnosis of non-obstructive vasospermia, consider the chances of retrieving sperm successfully with a microtessie, the success rates with IVF ICSI, and having a successful pregnancy all the way to a live birth, the chance of success is about 24% with all of these factors uh, calculated into it. Now, it's really important to remember that this is the average based on the literature, but your particular scenario, there are a lot of variables that can impact success rates, and it's best to have a face-to-face -face conversation with your treating fertility experts, both on the male side and the female side, to try to give you as accurate of an estimate as possible. If we don't want to use uh, your sperm or we don't have the options to use your sperm, uh, it's important to recognize there are additional options such as sperm donation as well as adoption. In summary, non-obstructive vasospermia is due to sperm production problems. This can be a central problem when the signal is not being sent to the testicle because of dysfunction in the pituitary or the hypothalamus, or it can be a problem in the function of the testicle even with adequate levels of signal. Depending on your particular scenario, medical treatment may be used to help stimulate sperm production if it's a central problem, but typically surgical sperm retrieval will be required if it's a testicular uh, dysfunction problem. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like more information, feel free to visit my website or the YouTube channel listed here and my Twitter handle below. Thanks very much.